So you've just bought your DJI Mini 4 Pro, but there are some really important settings you need to change immediately before you go off and fly this drone to get the very most out of it. 15 settings you need to change. Let's get into that video. And if you're new in here, I make tech and drone content every single week. So you don't want to miss out on any future videos. Hit the subscribe button and let's get into number one. Now these settings need to be changed because when you get the drone straight out of the box, a lot of these settings aren't set up, I don't think, to get the very most out of this drone straight away. The first thing we want to change and make sure you've actually got set up correctly is if we click on the top right hand corner, we're going to look now at the obstacle avoidance. So on the Mini 4 Pro, we have omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. So you've got full 360 obstacle avoidance. So you should be using it majority of the time. I would say all of the time, unless for two separate scenarios, you should have obstacle avoidance on. I personally use bypass. This means if the drone will detect any objects, it's going to bypass them, it's gonna go around them and then continue its flight. If you turn it on to brake, then this means the drone is going to stop all the time it sees any obstacle. So if it's tracking you, that's not going to be very good. Now, sometimes when you first get this drone, obstacle avoidance will be turned off. So this is a disaster waiting to happen. If you think your obstacle avoidance is going to work straight away, well, it actually needs to be switched on. You need to hit bypass to make sure obstacle avoidance is activated. Now, if you're in sports mode, so you're trying to get to a location faster, obstacle avoidance does not work in sports mode. It will be turned off and you cannot turn this on. So the only times I would actually have obstacle avoidance off is if, if I was in sports mode or I'm flying in an area which is a really tight space. Let's say I'm flying the drone through a gap. I don't want any obstacle avoidance to be moving that drone off its course. I want to be in full control. In that situation, I would turn the sensors off. But for every other situation, have them on and switch them to bypass. The Mini 4 Pro is capable of filming up to 4K quality, so we want to actually record and get the very most out of this drone. But by default, it's actually set to 1080p HD quality. We don't want that. That needs to be changed immediately. So I'll go into video, and then in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see res and FPS. If we click on that, you will see the options. So 1080p, and next to that is 4K. So it does go all the way up to 4K 60. Now I will use 4K60 for slowing footage down. So on a timeline, let's just say the timeline is 4K30. If I film in 4K60, I could slow that footage down by half to get some really good slow motion. But that's the only time I use 4K60 to slow footage down. The rest of the time I'm filming in either 4K30 or 4K25. And by default, quick shots are also selected for 1080p. We've got a 4K drone. We want our quick shots to be in 4K. So go into the quick shots menu, go into the same resolution and change that to 4K. Master shots is also fantastic. That is also set at 1080p. So we go to the master shots menu. At the bottom of there, you will see res and FPS, and you can change that now to 4K, either 30 or 60. And all of those modes, you can now on the Mini 4 Pro, change them to D-Log. So if you want the very best quality, use D-Log in Quick Shots or Master Shots. Just don't use HD. The Mini 4 Pro is great for photos, either in horizontal or vertical. But by default, this is set to JPEG. The problem with JPEG is it's okay for sharing to say Instagram. But if you take a picture and it doesn't look very good straight away, you can't adjust that afterwards with a JPEG photo as much as you could with a RAW photo. So what a RAW photo does is that's going to capture so much more data. So the file sizes are bigger, but you can then adjust that photo and you could tweak the exposure, the saturation, the highlights, the shadows. You could actually recover a bad photo and make it good. Whereas with a JPEG photo, you kind of that's the result you're left with. So I would always turn on instantly JPEG and RAW under format on the photo option. And if you click on settings whilst in the photo menu, you want to change the aspect ratio. By default, this is set to 16 by nine, but you should select four by three. This is going to use that full sensor on the Mini 4 Pro when it's capturing that photo. So it's going to capture more information at the top and bottom of the photo. You can still make a 16 by nine photo out of it afterwards, but you're going to get the very best in terms of actual quality using four by three aspect ratio. 
Now, a bonus one for you, I use 12 megapixel, not 48. Yes, 48 megapixel is gonna be better quality. It's gonna be good if you want to crop in afterwards, but when you've got both of them on the screen, it's hard really to tell the difference. What I don't really like is that the 48 megapixel resolution takes so much longer to process afterwards. So if you're taking multiple photos in that location, it's gonna take a lot longer. In that situation, for me, majority of the time, I'm just using 12 megapixel photos. Now this is really important, it happens on all the DJI drones, especially on the Mini 4 Pro. So if we go into gain and expo tuning, and we're just gonna talk about in this video, the actual gimbal. So by default, the gimbal speed, the way it goes up and down on this controller here is far too fast. You want the gimbal motions to be nice and smooth. You don't want any abrupt motion, it just looks terrible. So when you're actually moving this gimbal wheel, you want that gimbal to increase and decrease nice and smooth and also end smoothly as well. By default, it's far too fast. So I will change these settings now and make the max control speed a lot lower. So under cine mode, I have it set to four and I have the smoothness set to 15. This gives me a much better gimbal motion, a lot slower, a lot more cinematic. And I'll use that in both cine and normal. Now, if you're enjoying this so far, but you might struggle to remember all of these different settings, I have my own DJI Mini 4 Pro cheat sheets that have just been released. You're gonna get 22 different cheat sheets that go through all of the settings on the Mini 4 Pro. You get these in an instant download. You can have a store them on your phone or you can print them out like I got here. And they go through all the new features like the Active Track 360. You go into detail about the Gain and Expo tuning, talk about composition, how to get pro settings in photos and videos. Literally everything you're gonna need to know on your Mini 4 Pro is on these cheat sheets. And these are fantastic. They're available on my website right now. They're just 9.99. Print them any size you want. They're all high resolution, fantastic quality, just like the Mini 3 Pro ones, but these ones now are even better. If you wanna go and check them out, they're all gonna be linked at the top of the description. Composition and framing are so important and grid lines by default are turned off. So I would say have one of these on all of the time. So if you go to camera and scroll about halfway down, you'll see grid lines. Turn on the middle one. This is a rule of thirds. This is gonna be fantastic for framing. Have that on all of the time. I would never turn that off. So let's just say this little path here. I can have that directly in the center now. So I could actually fly over that and I know it's perfectly framed on that shot. And there's also the grid line on the left-hand side as well. So if you turn that on, you're going to get this like crosshair on the screen. This is also really good for composing shots and gives you a little bit more detail, show you exactly what's that center focus. Have your grid lines on all the time. On the Mini 4 Pro, we have the option to shoot in normal, HLG or D-Log-M color profiles. We now have three. The normal color profile, this is going to be best for beginners, but that is 8-bit video quality. So that captures around about 16 million colors every time you're actually filming a video on your drone. But when you use D-Log-M, this is capturing 1 billion colors. It's a 10-bit color profile. It's going to protect the highlights and shadows and going to give you the very most in terms of quality. So I would advise switching switching D-Log-M on. Now you do need to have some kind of experience in color grading when using D-Log-M because it is that flat color profile. You can actually make that video look worse if you don't really know what you're doing. Now I have my own D-Log-M lots if you wanna go and check them out. They're specially designed for the Mini 4 Pro as well. That just saves you all that learning curve. But once you have got the experience with color grading, the difference in quality from normal to D-Log-M is vast. And that's how you're gonna get the very most out of this drone by using D-Log-M color profile in video. So switch that on when you are ready. Now, if the drone loses connection for some reason, it's gonna come back to you. It's called return to home but the height it actually comes back to you, that's for you to set yourself. Now you want to change this depending on certain situations. So if you're flying your drone where there's loads of trees, you want your return to home altitude to be higher than any of those objects in that area. So if I'm around loads of trees, I might increase this to 120 meters. So I know that drone can go higher than them. Sometimes it's actually unavoidable. It might be really tall buildings, in which case you're gonna to have to be super careful but if you have a look on there and it says 20 meters and any of the objects in that area you're flying are higher than 20 meters, there's a chance this drone could crash on its way back to you. Check that setting every single time. 
on the Mini 4 Pro, you've actually got AR now assisting in your flying. This is also off by default. Go into safety, halfway down, you'll see AR settings. If you click on that, you can turn all three of these on, and I would 100% do so. If you look at show AR home points, it's gonna give you a little H icon on the screen, showing your home point all the time. As the drone moves around, that H icon will also move. AR return to home route. So as the drone is coming back to you on a return to home, you'll get this really cool looking green marker on the screen showing you the exact route that drone is gonna take coming back to you. And when it's landing, you're also going to get this aircraft shadow. This is really cool if you're landing on say a moving object. Let's just say you're on a boat. You stop that boat, but you want to actually have that landing really precise. You can see now where that drone is going to be landing with AR shadow. Now this one is really important. You need to check this before every single flight. Go onto your settings, go onto the first page under safety and go right to the bottom, advanced safety settings. So if that signal would disconnect for some reason, what do you want the drone to do? Most of the time you want it to return to home. So select return to home. So it will always come back to you. If that signal gets lost, something goes wrong, it will come back to you. But you might also want to select hover. So let's just say for instance, the drone is tracking you and you're on a bike. Your home point is gonna be changing all the time. You might have set off from say a mile back. If your signal disconnects, you don't want that drone to go all the way back. You want it to hover in place because it's gonna be nearer to you in that situation. And then if it hovers, you can actually go to that drone. You can take control because it's just gonna hover in place until you get near it and then you can take over and fly it manually. I would never select return to home if you're on something that's moving. So a car, you could be on a boat or a bike. But descend, just don't ever select descend. I don't know why that is an option. I still haven't figured that out. Why descend is an option. Active Track 360 on this drone is fantastic. We have a full 360 degrees now where the drone can track you from, but we have even more customization settings. So if we go into control, you'll notice the third one down is focus track settings. So under this, you can actually change the actual distance that that drone tracks you from. So if you're actually tracking you from the outer ring, and I've gone through this on my full Active Track video, I want that drone to be quite far back tracking me to get this really nice wide shot. By default, it's still too close. So I changed the outer radius slider all the way to 15 meters. And I also increased the outer height as well under these settings. Most of the time when you land in the drone on the ground, you've got different obstacles on the ground that could cause problems with this drone. It could be gravel, it could be like leaves jamming the propellers. It could be sand getting into the motors. So try and get into a habit of practicing hand landings. But to do this, or basically wherever you're landing, you'll notice when you go and land this drone, if you have your sensors switched on, it doesn't always land instantly. It's very cautious about landing. To turn all them off, what I do on pretty much every landing, I put it into cine mode. So I've got full control of this. It's gonna go really slow. And then I'll turn the obstacle avoiding sensors off. So I then have full control landing that drone on either my hand or the ground without any interference from that drone moving around thinking there are obstacles in that area. Turn the sensors off, put it onto cine mode and your landings will be a lot easier. Now a really important one is flight protection. So you might get your drone and by default, this is set to say 50 meters in height and distance. And you fly that drone and you go, right, it's faulty, I'm packing this away, the drone is terrible. Get it all packed up, you're on the phone to DJI saying this drone is terrible. What's the problem? It will only fly 50 meters away and then it keeps stopping, it won't go any further. That's because under the actual flight protection, you've not changed that slider of the height and distance. So change this. Most of the time, the maximum height should be 120 meters or 400 feet. And the distance, again, it depends on your country. But change them, have them around about 100 meters on each one or more. And then it means you're not as going to be limited where you're flying that drone. I found the video quality of the Mini 4 Pro to be a little bit too sharp, but we can adjust this in the settings. If you go to camera, scroll down, you can actually adjust the sharpening and also that noise reduction. I would advise changing the sharpening to minus one.
The radar map is actually turned off by default. It's going to give you so much information. If you click on the top right hand corner and go to safety and the third one down display radar map. You want to actually turn that on and then if you don't see it it's at the bottom left hand corner. Just click on that and it should enlarge a little bit. This is going to give you key information. It's going to show you the direction of that drone. It's also going to show you your home point and you can see the shaded and unshaded parts. As you move that drone around it will show you the orientation of that drone. So if it looks like it's getting blown around too much it's too windy there bring that drone back it's also going to show you red little dots on that radar map as well those are any obstructions you want to actually look at them and go actually i shouldn't be flying here or i need to be really careful in this area always have that radar map on so there you go, really important settings you need to change on your Mini 4 Pro. I still don't understand why by default, some of these settings are set the way they are, but I hope that helps you out. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you wanna go and pick up these cheat sheets, they're all gonna be linked at the top of the description. So these will really help you out. You're never gonna forget all of these settings when you're out flying your drone. Thanks so much for watching, you really do appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.